Welcome back to our list of the top 25 SEC players for 2009. We've been counting them down in segments of five in the paper, segments of one. And uh, we hope you've been enjoying it. We did it last summer, and everybody seemed to get a kick out of it. Counting down towards number one, we're at number 10 right now. Antonio Coleman, the big defensive end at Auburn. Auburn always seems to have a guy I was just going to say, they <laughs> always have a, a great defensive end. It's like every year, no matter what, all of a sudden, now this guy, you know, it's, he – Fits the mold of Auburn defensive player. He does. Event. Physical, fast. Yeah. But, and that's what, you know, uh, I was talking to Ron Zook one day, and he said the difference between the Big Ten and the SEC, defensive linemen. They can they run. They run, yeah. yeah Which they, we saw in the, the championship game in 2006. Against Ohio State, exactly. Ohio State had this great offensive line that had never played against anything like Florida through Adam, and boy, and this is a deal guy, with it. And this is a guy right in that mold as oh, well. Yeah. Should have a big year. Uh, number nine, we have Saron Black, great offensive lineman from LSU. and. And again, they always seem to have yeah. a great offensive three, lineman. Three-year starter at left tackle, Pat. Very reliable. He's always there. Mm -hmm. what, last year he played 1,000 snaps, wow. which only a handful of players have done in LSU history. So this is a guy that takes care of his quarterback, and he's always there. He never comes out of a game. Sounds like he could pitch for the Washington softball team. Yeah. There's so <laughs> yeah. much. Number eight, Carlos Dunlap. Hey, there's the matchup we're looking forward to in Baton Rouge. Carlos oh, yeah. Dunlap against Saron Black. But... Carlos Dunlap, the MOP defensively, is that, is that what they call it, the most outstanding yeah. is the MVP? MOP defensively of the um, uh, national championship game down in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Dania, whatever it was. Where were we anyway? I don't somewhere know. in South Florida. Yeah, somewhere in South Florida. Had a huge game, of course, blocked a field goal, had a, had a sack, and, and uh, still has not reached his potential. Not, you talk to Mickey Marotti, he's not even close. Yeah. His upside is huge, and he's trying to get there, and he's doing it trying to learn you know the work ethic they're asking of him if he gets there he's going to be a, just a phenomenal player but he has work to do to get to where they want him to be i mean if he doesn't get there he's still in he's the top still 10 good, yeah i mean he could be the second or third best player in this in this thing if he if he figured you know i asked urban about him one time he said he if he wants to be he can be the best defensive end to ever play at florida oh yeah and there's been some good ones jack emblem comes to mind yeah but we'll see how he does in that and and i think you know again we, we talked about contract years before robbie this is a contract year for Carlos Dunlap. Yeah. I mean, if he needs to have a big year, he can make a lot yeah, if he, of money. Yeah, if he would develop Brandon Spike's work ethic, yeah. you, you're talking about, you know, just a phenomenal player. We're at number seven, and that would be Mr. Greg Hardy Har Har <laughs> from uh, Ole Miss. And again, we, Florida doesn't laugh when they think of him. No, they don't. And he's a great player. Remember, he came back yeah. for the Florida game last year. He'd been out with a foot. Had some. There was a lot of talk he was going to go. I think there was at least one report by the worldwide leader that he was going. And of course, it was wrong among many of them. <laughs> but decided to come back. Uh, had off-season foot surgery, and I think they feel like he's going to be healthy now. And wow, just he, a great player. He is really good. Uh, another again, he's going to be a high draft pick. Big, rangy, can move. Typical SEC defensive yeah, lineman. And Houston not really inherited a lot of talent. He did at that so, that school. Kind of like Urban Meyer. Yeah. Very similar. Very similar. Number six. We're back to a Gator, Mr. Brandon Spikes, Robbie. And I was so stunned that he came back. I really I was. was. too. He was ready to come out. He there was. There's no question. He would have been a first-round pick. I talked to him after the national championship game down in the press area, and he says, you know, I feel like I've done everything I can do. I go, well, then, yeah. Yeah, okay. every, the feeling was Congratulations. Go, go to the NFL. And, but for some reason, I'm not sure we really even know the reason. I think I, I think he got bad, bad, yeah. in, bad input back have. from the NFL. Thought, they wanted to move yeah. him to the outside. I also think that Tim Tebow had an influence yeah. on him. I think when T Tebow said he was coming back, I think Brandon said, maybe I'm coming back too and we're going to win, you know, try to repeat. And that, that's the whole goal now, try to repeat. That's what they talk about all the time over here. Let's do Those it again. Two, I'm coming Spikes back. And Tebow. We came back too. We had a chance to leave. We could have gone out we easily. Did? Well, maybe. <laughs> all right, so that's 6 through 10. There is no pro league for us, no. is there? 6 through 10. The amateur league. Yeah, right. Amateur hour. Six through ten, we're we're at the top ten. We're getting ready to go to the top five. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this. We have Robbie and your Pat Dooley will come back next video, one through five. We'll see you.